What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you're finding this content useful, please go ahead and do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate your support. Okay, so in the last couple of videos over the last two weeks, we spoke about exporting stems in Studio One, and then I actually did a follow-up Q&A video where I addressed some questions and concern, and I also outlined the way that I like to organize and structure my Studio One songs when exporting stems. Now, that being said, I made mention of the whole concept of working with raw audio files, and I mentioned that we were going to tackle that in a later video. So this is what we're going to be looking at in this one. Now, first of all, what are raw audio files? Okay, well, the really simple explanation is it is essentially any audio clip that gets recorded directly into your arrange window, regardless of which DAW that you're working with, that is the raw audio file. And raw audio files don't pay any attention to any fader movements that you have. So if I had this fader level set to here, or if I have this panning off to the left, raw audio files are simply the actual audio file that was recorded. So if I right click, choose audio, and we select in pool, you'll notice that we have this file that's existing in our pool. If I right click this and show it in Finder, this is the raw audio file itself. Let's go ahead and preview this quickly. So it is an acoustic guitar, it's using a Lewitt microphone. So each one of the files that's existing here, this is the actual raw audio file. Now, one thing that's important to point out is depending on the way that you actually record your song, you may have certain cases where the audio file starts exactly at the beginning of the song, and in other cases like these files over here, or this one over here, or this one over here, you'll notice that they're not actually starting at the very beginning of the song. So the whole concept with raw audio files is that when you give them to somebody, you want them to be able to drag in those files into the DAW. And as someone who both receives and delivers raw audio files on a regular basis, another thing that's really important is consolidating the files into one contiguous audio file. And also, you really want to make sure that they all start at the exact same position. Regardless of if we have all this blank space in the beginning over here, I want to make sure that any files that I export and give to somebody, they can drag them into their DAW of choice, drop them in at any bar, and each file will play properly against each other in terms of having the proper timing. Now, two things I want to point out really quickly when exporting, and then we'll hop into the workflow, is that any event gain that is rendered into a file, so for example, if we take a look at this file, and we were to drag this down, if I brought this event gain down, this would actually change the level at which a raw audio file would be exported. Because even though the raw audio files are going to ignore any fader levels and any panning levels that are set, they will actually render any fades that you've created, and also any event gain changes that we created. And also in the case where you're using event effects, in this case, we're using the saturation knob on this particular file. If you have any event effects, and that includes things such as Melodyne, then those will also be rendered into your raw audio files as well. And that is just based on the way that Studio One works. So we have a couple different choices. You can either click the event effects icon on any audio events, and then you can open this up and you can choose to power this down. Or if you could open up the inspector, head down to the bottom here where it says event effects, we could expand this and I could essentially turn off the inserts or any insert effects that we have. So if you did some scratch vocal tuning with Melodyne and you want to be exporting a raw audio region, then you definitely want to make sure that you go in and you disable that particular plugin on that particular event or that particular track. So that's just one thing that I wanted to point out. In this particular case though, let's actually leave that on just so we can kind of see how that affects things when we do our export. Now in terms of the exporting, it is worth mentioning that it can be done using the export stems function. This is something that I didn't cover when I went over exporting stems. If you engage this preserve mono tracks option over here, and for example, we're looking at the tracks over here, then if an audio file was a mono audio file that was recorded, it will actually preserve this. And obviously it would ignore any panning that you had done on your track. But I don't ever use this option because this would require you to essentially set every single fader to unity gain. And also you'd have to expand your console. And if you had any plugins that were instantiated, 
you'd have to deactivate all those plugins and it's just not an easy way to work because there's actually a much more simple way and that is by using a drag and drop workflow. Okay, so with all that being said and done, let's have a look at the actual workflow. So what I'm gonna do is I've headed over to my files tab and I've made a new folder. Now one thing that's really good to do is whenever you're exporting raw audio files or regions, clips, events, whatever you wanna call them, is that it's a really good idea to actually include the BPM. So not all DAWs will recognize tempo information written by other DAWs. So if you write this down in the actual folder name, then the engineer down the line will be able to say, okay, this is 100 BPM. So they'll be able to set their actual BPM in their specific DAW accordingly. So I've already gone ahead and done that. Like I mentioned before, whenever you're exporting raw audio files, the whole idea is that I want these to all line up nicely and I want them to be consolidated in terms of if we have different audio clips that are residing on one track over here, in this case, we have two different ones. I want all of these to be consolidated. Now, as we know in Studio One, if we choose the range tool and I was to make a range selection and I was to bounce this, that this would create a new file and it would essentially consolidate this into a contiguous audio file or audio region, audio clip. We actually don't have to do all this bounces in the song before we do our export. We can actually just make a selection that covers across all of the audio tracks that we need. So for example, I'm gonna just choose just outside of the longest file over here. And I like to make them all the same length. So we will drag over all the way to bar one. And you'll see now that I have all of my audio files that are selected. Now, obviously, if you have any tracks that are in folders, you would have to expand those folders so that you have access to these audio files. And the other thing is we don't have any stereo tracks here, but if I did have any stereo tracks here, this would be the same process. We would just be highlighting across that whole stereo file. So now we know that any fades that we've created in terms of our editing will be rendered into the file or consolidated. Any event gain, like for this one over here, we brought this down, this will be rendered into the file. And any event effects, if they are enabled, this will be rendered into the file, even though we're exporting raw audio files. This is just the way that Studio One works. So now with this selection made, I'm just going to drag across here and you'll see that the default selection is I have this little X icon that's right beside WAV files. Now, if you hold down alter option, that would actually export your WAV file with rendered insert effects. So that's not something I wanna do here though. We're talking about raw audio files. So let's go ahead and we'll do that. And now you'll note that it is actually consolidating new files and it's rendering new files. So it's gone ahead and it's exported all these files here. Now, really quickly, let's take a look at some of the name structure here. You'll note that the name of the actual tracks, which happen to be the same for the most part as the audio events in Studio One, is the name that was given to all these audio files when they were exported. So for this case, we have, for example, banjo, acoustic, acoustic three, ukulele, bass, shaker, tambourine, uh, lap steel. But take a look at this file over here. We have 10 lap steel dash with event effects. So if we listen to this one, and we'd have to fast forward to an area where this was. So let's go about here. Now let's listen to the one with event effects. So notice that soft tube saturation knob was actually rendered into the file. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. If you have Melodyne on any vocals, you wanna make sure that you disable Melodyne or it will be rendered in. So essentially what's happened here is we have in one step, we've made a range selection, which has basically consolidated new files. We've consolidated any event gain and we've consolidated any fade ins and fade outs that we've done. And these are all the exact duration that we need. So if, for example, I was to take all these files and I've got a macro that allows me to essentially hide and disable them, let's make a selection and let's drag all these back in. You will note now that we have all these new files that were created. They are all the exact same length because they're starting from bar one. And the important thing to note is that these did not pay any attention to any panning or any fader level that we set before we drag these out. These are essentially just raw audio clips that can be given to another person if they wanted to continue recording in another DAW or perhaps they wanted to mix your files. One thing to point out really quickly, uh, let's go ahead and just take all these files and in fact, I will just hide and disable these and let's bring our original ones back in and let us re-enable these tracks over here. 
With respect to specific cases where you've recorded files as dual mono, but you actually want to render them to a stereo file, this is something that you can do beforehand. If I wanted to deliver a stereo mix of these two files, let's say that I was happy with this balance, and this is something that I wanted to deliver to the engineer, but I still wanted to export it as a raw audio file, there's a couple things that you can do. And one really easy way to do that is with your fader at Unity Gain, and the only thing we're adjusting here is our panning. I could, for example, make a range selection across these two tracks where I'm essentially highlighting a selected range and I could right click and then we have this option to mix down selection. Now what mix down selection does is essentially just solo these tracks out and it will render them out of the main outs and it will bring them back in. Now you'll also note that it just gives them the name mix down. But if I was to listen to these tracks now, this is essentially a stereo mix down of the file. So I could, for example, say stereo guitars. And in fact, let's double click to highlight this and click shift enter and we will rename the track and the audio event to be the same thing. So now, if I wanted to render some of my dual mono tracks into a stereo file, that's one way that we could do it. We could just use that export mixdown function. And then because I've made the length or duration to be the exact same, I used my range selection tool to highlight from the end to the very beginning. I could now do the exact same thing over here and let's highlight across this whole entire track from here right to the very beginning. And I could now drag this file to my raw audio regions and I'm going to render now a stereo file. So now we have our stereo guitars track. Now there's also other ways that we could render a stereo file, but the main reason that I used mix down selection is it's just a really convenient way to be able to select multiple tracks and be able to mix them down into a stereo file. And of course that's rendering any pan information and it would also render any fader information. But in this case, I was happy with my faders at Unity Gain and my panning hard left and hard right. So that is exporting raw audio in Studio One. Very easy to do with that drag and drop workflow. So anyways, that's all the time that I have available for today. If this video was helpful, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, leave them below. I'll do my best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.